everybody, Tracking Pat here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the manual mode, better known as the DRO mode in the ProTrack RMX. Most of what you're gonna see in here is the same no matter whether it's a KMX or an SLX or an SRX or whatever the heck you might have because the manual mode pretty much stays the same throughout all the different products we make. But uh, what happens a lot of times is when we're out there teaching people how to use the machine, we start out with the manual mode and then by the time we go three or four hours later and teach them all the other things about programming and stuff like that, they kind of forget this part and we would like them to have something they can come back and refer to. So here I am at the main screen in the RMX and I'm going to select DRO and you'll see here that I'm in the DRO mode and you're looking at the main screen of the DRO. And first of all, the first thing I want to tell you is that there are two sets of numbers. So your absolute numbers are of course the values for where your part zero is. But if I touch where it says ABS on each of these, I can change to incremental so that I can have a second set of zeros which will not affect my actual part zero numbers. Okay, I'm going to change them back for now. And then I'm going to show you how to just set a number, right? So if I had my edge finder in here like I do in my quill right now, and I was supposedly bumping off the side of my part, I would simply select X. You'll see that gold bar shows up to tell me that I'm going to reset this number. I'm going to hit absolute zero that will set it as absolute zero. Now I could also do it and preset it. So in other words, if I was using my edge finder and I was touching off of minus 0.1, I could also set it that way so I don't have to do it twice, okay? The next thing I wanna talk about is the feed and speed wheels, okay? So we have two of them in here for different feeds and speeds that you wanna set. And you'll see right now that my RPM is set to 1000 RPM. So if I wanted that to be 1200, I would just highlight it, punch in 1200, Hit the offset key and now when I turn it on, it's gonna run at 1200. Whatever I set my feed or speed rate at, I also have a lot of different ways to override. So you'll see around the outside of the circle, there's different percentages. So like in this case, when I hit 150%, you'll see that it automatically changes the value here. Same thing as if I were to hit 25%, it cuts it down to that point, all right? Another way that you can adjust it, which is usually what you do on the fly, would be to change it by 1% at a time. So each time I push this down arrow or this up arrow, it changes by 1% so that I can get everything to run at the speed I need while I'm machining. The last way that I can adjust this is just to touch this wheel and as if I bring my finger out, the farther I bring my finger out, the slower the resolution is as I turn around here to adjust it. So therefore I can kind of tune it in on the fly, okay? Everything in the feed rate works the same way as what I just showed you there. So I don't really have to go over all of that. But the other things I wanna talk about are just what these different functions are in the manual mode, because this is usually the part people forget. So I'm gonna start at the left and work my way over. So the first thing is the power feed, okay? As we all know, there's an incremental and an absolute button in the machine. And in some cases, you have to use incrementals for things. So notice that right now I am not at zero, zero on my screen. But let's say from there, I wanna move that cutter, I'm going to pretend it's a cutter, over four inches. What I would do is select the axis I want to move, and then I would tell it how far I want to move, and you'll notice the absolute button will not take that value. I have to use incremental because it's from where I am to where I'm going, not from part zero. So you notice in here now it says four inches incremental, okay, it's going to make me turn the spindle on, okay, and then when I push go, it's going to actually move, okay, so when I push go, You'll see now that it's going to feed at that feed rate over to four inches from where it was sitting, okay? Now while it's machining, I can feed, put the feed rate up and make it go a little faster, but I can only go to 150% of where I started. So keep in mind that it's always going to be in conjunction of where I was when I started. So if I would have started at 40 inches a minute, then every time I bumped it up, it would change 10% from that. So it just depends on what my numbers were. Once I get to the final point of destination, it's just going to stop. I can shut my spindle back off. And if I wanted to use power feed again in any axis, I would just then tell it what axis, how fast, how far, push go, it'll run again. Okay, I'm gonna push return. The next thing we're gonna talk about is go to. Go to is a function that you will only have if you have electronic hand wheels. And sometimes with electronic hand wheels, it's a separate option. So assuming you have both, the way that GoTo works is it's just an electronic stop that you use in the manual mode. So I go to GoTo and it's saying which one of these hand wheels do you want to stop? So I'm going to select the x-axis again because it's easier to keep it in front of the camera. And I'm going to say I want it to stop at two inches absolute. So what's going to happen is as I'm dialing backwards, when I get to two inches, 
You might not be able to see my hand right now, but when I get to two inches, my hand's still moving, but the machine stops at two inches. I can go this way forever, but each time I go this direction, it stops at two inches. When I push return, I'm back where I was. Now I can go past that number, but if I go back to go to, it remembers that value, so now it will stop from the other direction each time it gets to two inches. So that's the way GoTo works. It's just a handy thing when I got to remove some material and I want to make a program. Okay? Return to absolute zero takes the machine back to home. Okay? So anytime that I've moved around, I've already set a home position for my tool changes and such. If I say return to absolute zero, it's going to tell me, hey, when you're ready, push go. When I push go, it's going to move up and it's going to move back to zero, zero. Okay? Now, I'm going to bring that quill back down so you guys can see the tool, but I wanted to make sure that you know that is always going to move in the Z first and then X and Y to go to your zero point, okay? I've got three more buttons in here I want to talk about, but I'm going to go to jog first, okay? So when I go to jog, remember two things. First of all, it's always going to jog in the positive direction, okay? The second thing is it's going to jog whichever one of the buttons of the axes that you push. So therefore, the most important thing is the fact that it's going to jog at the full speed you have programmed. So if this machine can run up to 400 inches a minute, it can jog pretty quickly. So you may want to slow it down, okay? But in this case, if I forget to push the minus sign, the great thing is it's always going to go up. It's never going to come down into the part, right? So if I want to jog down, I'm going to go into here. I'm going to say I want to go negative direction. And now when I push the Z, I'm going to bring that back down within a reasonable point, all right? When I push return, I'm back out of jog. So it works that way for all three axes. It's always going to be positive unless I select negative. The next thing I want to talk about is the center, okay? What center is is the easiest way to find the distance between two points. So if I go to center, it gives me a choice of finding the center of a line or to find the center of an arc or a circle. So I'm going to keep it simple and show you from a line. So I go to a line and it says move to your first location in X and Y. So let's pretend that my quill is on. It's easier for you guys to hear me if I don't run it, right? And I tell it, okay, I'm there. So I just push the absolute set key like it says, and then I move to the other end, okay? Now also keep in mind that I can change these electronic hand wheels from fast to slow or find a course so that I can get around quicker. So now I touch my edge finder off the other side and I hit set key, and it's going to calculate the distance between the two and then find the middle. Once it does that, it says, hey, when you're ready, make sure the Z's out of the way so it's not going to hit anything. And when I push go, it's going to move to the center of those two positions. This makes it much easier when your part zero is in the middle of a block and you're just touching off the edges and you need to find the middle. Okay? And when you do use a center of an arc or a circle, the only difference is you touch three spots and then it calculates the center. So it works exactly the same way. Okay? Last but not least, I want to talk about teach. I made a separate video on just how to use teach, and I think you're much better off to just go watch that video, but I want to remind you what it's for. It's basically for reverse engineering. Let's say I've got a part with no print, and I've got to pick up three different holes that are in there so I can create a program. What I would do is I'd go into teach, and then I can either save a position or a drilling event or make a straight line mill, right? So I would, in this case, say, hey, I got to drill this, right? So I would go in there and save that spot, and then when I go to the next spot, try to stay out of the camera, I would say save that spot too. And that process would continue on, and then what would happen is when I go into the program mode, I'm going to go to the end, and you're going to see that there's a teach drill event in here. And I guess I only saved one of them, sorry about that. But nonetheless, you get the idea, so then I just fill in that information, and what I taught it manually becomes part of my actual program. Okay, it's something that doesn't get used a whole lot. I'm going to just erase them for now. But it's something that may come in handy once in a while when you're trying to reverse engineer a part that you don't have a print for. But most of the time, as you already know, prototracks are easier and faster if you just program the part as opposed to doing it by hand. And you can't teach it how to cut an arc, and you can't teach it how to cut an angle. So it's really stuck to positions and straight line milling. Okay, so when I go back to DRO mode, I just want to show you that we've kind of talked about everything except the tool number. If I open the tool table right here, you'll see that I've got a whole bunch of different tools in here. And even if I don't have a program, if I've got tools in my library, these library numbers allow me to use them manually. So you'll notice in here I got them everywhere from 101 to 107. So if I close that now and I'm in the DRO and I say I want to use tool number 101, you'll see the z-axis change for the offset of that particular tool. So if I brought that tool down and wanted to machine manually, 
I could do so. And then when I take that tool out and put another tool in, I would say, okay, now I want to use tool number 102. And it's going to change that number so that each of those tools touches the top of the part at the same zero reference. Okay, so this should give you a little bit clearer idea on how the DRO mode works. It's pretty easy, but this is a good refresher course for you. Hopefully it helps you out a little bit. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, keep on tracking.